You're welcome back to the final part of tonight's show where Asheen Larkin is in the mood for dancing, romancing and baking. Glad <laughs> you are singing. You oh. sing and I will bake. How about that? So what are you making? What are you baking? Well, tonight? baking Valentine's Day on Monday. Now, yes. I wouldn't be the most romantic soul on the planet, but you look, if I can well, bake, you, you bake then we'll do something. We'll, it's, it's a one way to the heart anyway, it's through totally, the belly. Totally. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make a red velvet love cake tonight. Ooh. Nice. So this is it, all done, ready to go. It's so easy. And I think, you know, a little bit more homemade looking. You don't mm. want a too perfect looking. Yeah. Let them know you worked hard for it, you put the effort in, yeah. and it looks, you know, delicious. It looks incredible, and it smells incredible. Oh, it's gorgeous. Red velvet is really, really nice. So I'm going to show you how to make the cake first. So what I have on here is my butter and my sugar. Now, I've creamed that. That means you let it beat for four to seven minutes. If you have a mixer like this, you'll get it done quicker. Handheld one, give it an extra couple of minutes. Mm. Really good top tip. Um, Spreadable margarine works really, really well at this stage. It gets your cake lighter and fluffier. Okay. So butter is great for flavouring a cake. Spreadable margarine makes your cake really, really okay. light and fluffy. And what if you don't have an automatic one? Because you whip it up manually. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but you're going to be seven, <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> work those muscles, get it done, get the cake yeah. done. Yeah. So that goes on, that's nice and creamy. And this is the stage that people get wrong at cakes all the time. Mm. They don't beat it for long enough. It's essential to do that part because actually when the flour goes in, which is going in next, Flour has, um, it basically toughens up the cake. So the more you mix the flour, the tougher it gets, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to pop in some flour. So plain flour, and into that I have some cocoa and some baking soda. Not right. baking powder. And there was Yes, I know what, did you just change it completely, the names? Because it's so confusing when it's like, you know, baking soda or, or baking powder. Bicarbonate yeah. soda. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. 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 Bicarbonate soda, bread soda, baking bread soda. soda. Yeah, the same thing. Those three names are the same yeah. thing. <sighs> and it really Straight does. over my head, that's <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. The, these are the toys. So baking powder. <laughs> Ba no, baking soda. So, so, so not so baking powder. So okay. baking powder is the different one. Baking right. soda is, is the one you Bread soda. Use. Bread soda. Okay, exactly. so we'll call it the bread soda then. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's the one I remember. remember. <laughs> and there's a really good reason why that is going in. Okay. Red velvet cake is red by its nature, yeah. but it's not as kind of this deep, deep red. It's kind of a more maroon brown colour, okay? And what happens is to keep your red velvet as red as possible and not have it going really brown, you want to lower the acidity in the cake. So you want everything to have a low pH. And um, your baking soda has a lower pH than baking powder. So this yeah. is a little bit of science. In here is buttermilk, lower pH again than regular milk. So that's where we're using that. Into that, I am putting my red food color. This is the liquid one, okay? The gel ones are significantly better. But I just want to show you what it looks like from if you do it at home. Mm. Okay. Vanilla going in next, and I've got the really nice vanilla going in there. And what happens is the buttermilk keeps the crumb really tender, really velvety, really, really soft. And that's what gets you this beautiful soft cake. So I've got my flour in there, I've got my buttermilk, I've got my vanilla, all that red colour going in. And it looks so bright and vibrant now, mm. but it does lose some of that as it bakes. The rest of the flour is going in. So we've got our raising agent, and then I have three eggs. Again, when you're baking, did you bake much? No, no. I just didn't no, think really. so. Sorry. <laughs> I make some brown bread sometimes. I was going to lie there and I was like, you know, nah, I better wouldn't not. Even That's get how I know about that the bread soda. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me a question, you were gone no. for Woo. Oh, So what I'm going to do is put this in and mix it. At this point, put it on slowly, let that mix away. And that's the part that you've got to be really, really gentle for. Mm. Again, as I said, you right. don't want to overbeat it. Tin. I have a 23 centimeter, nine inch tin. This is called a spring form tin, okay? So it has like this buckle on the outside. So when you pop it, it loosens and the cake just pops out. So it makes it so much easier yeah. for the cake to pop out. Can I ask a, a boy question, please? Go for it. How do I know if I've uh, overbeaten it? Uh, you won't know at this stage until it is done in the oven, okay? Yeah. So you just want it until it's all nicely mixed together. That's it done. Yeah. Okay. So Not it's very that long, yeah. easy, that gentle, that quick, and it wow. is done. Yeah. See how nice it looks? Yeah. Gorgeous. So this goes into your tin. Tin has been lined with parchment paper. And if you grease it, it's a little bit of extra insurance that the cake is going to pop out really, really easily. So just grease proof paper in, mm -hmm. pour that in, and then this bakes in the oven for, so it's beautiful. See the lovely color? Oh, lovely. Uh, yeah. It really is. Give it a good mix around. I've got a little bit of flour there. Stir that in. This goes in preheated oven at 180, or you can put it in, that's um, fan, 160, or else gas mark four. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna bake it, if you're baking it all like this in one tin, it's gonna take you about 35, 40 minutes. If you're baking it in two separate tins mm. and keeping it easier for yourself, you're gonna do it in about 20 minutes. So it's okay. really nice and quick. Flatten it out. Another super top tip for you is put a little hollow in the center. 
Mm. So when you bake cakes at home, they tend to rise up and get a little peak. Yeah, they so, do, that little poop. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so this prevents that happening. Okay. Um. Tap it, pop it in the oven, bake that one. Yeah. That one's done and ready to go. I'm just going to leave that over here for a sec. Right, got and three minutes. Yep. yep. So yep. this is the one that's made already. So what I did okay. was I just cut it open and split it down the middle. So we've got the top and we've got the bottom. And then we have to make our icing. So cream cheese icing, classic American style icing. Gorgeous with red velvet cake, carrot cake, all of those. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen it on carrot cake. Yeah, it's lovely. Delicious. Mm. I'm making it even more delicious tonight. And I am putting fresh cream through it. So oh. 200 mils of fresh cream and it keeps it so rich and luxurious and lovely. So what I have done here, I have my cream cheese, the block of cream cheese, the hard one, if you can get it is better. And I've already done most of this. What I've done is I have 150 grams of cream cheese, 600 grams of icing sugar, which is a lot of a lot, icing yeah. sugar to go in. Stir it For all the around. Sweet tooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is, oh yeah, there is. But you know, the cake actually isn't that sweet. Red velvet is kind of famously known to be not as sweet yeah. as other cakes. So you can kind of get away with the Three icing minutes. just yeah. a little bit. Stir that all around. Yeah. That comes together. And then what you're going to do is I've whipped my cream already. Fold your cream and your icing in together. Guys, like, I honestly, this icing is just amazing. This it's looks so amazing, good. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Here's one that's done already. This is what it looks like. Okay. Put it in the fridge, chill it down a little bit. And then we are going to bake the cake. I have some raspberries. So I thought Valentine's Day, yeah. put a little bit of raspberries in as well. So and the raspberries always taste nice with chocolate. Well, the chocolate oh, yeah. flavor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really, really nice. Mm. When you're icing the center of a cake, never go out to the edges, okay? So just stay in just that far, okay. because the, the weight, when you put the top on, will Flatten squish it, it down a little right. bit. Oh raspberries my God, in the, the middle. fresh raspberries. Oh, yeah, oh it's really nice. You could do a little layer of raspberry jam in there or a little raspberry syrup. Then this is the top one. I'm full of top tips tonight, by the way. Yeah. Another top tip. Yeah. Um, with your cake, always use the bottom as the top of your cake. So flip it over, because the bottom of the cake is always so much more even and smooth. Mm. So that's really, really smooth on top. And that's what you want it to look like. That's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. And then all you do minute. is lash the icing on top. Lash it and this on. is why we made loads, because you don't want to be mean about this part. And is this not the most perfect little Valentine's Day? It is. Homemade. It is. I wish I wish I had someone at home to be able to make that. Yeah, I need to get someone to make that Actually, for me now. Need to bring it home. Let's bring this home with me, please. In the car. I'll take this one. <laughs> and then I have my favorite chocolate. So all you do when you're going around the edges is just let it run down the edges. And like I said, it is. Oh, yeah, it just kind of comes down. Yeah, it looks beautiful and stretches all the way down. Um, definitely, if you, you can pop the icing in the fridge just before you use it. How long would you put it in the fridge for? Like an hour. Just give it half an hour an hour. And then I have my favourite Lindor lint chocolate going on top. A couple of fresh raspberries on top. And do you have that rose over there? Can I, I get do. that? I do. Yeah, here you go. A couple of fresh That's rose petals on top of a cake. Is that not just so nice? A little Divine. red sprinkles. Now, the heat of the lights has melted my icing on me a little bit. But sprinkle you can that go, on go top. to town on that, really. Just put like loads of different oh, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sprinkles and all okay. sorts. Yeah. And we're all getting roses for Valentine's Day. Well, we? hopefully, right? yeah, yeah. I'll bring that one home. Yeah, as yeah, I said, yeah. like, <laughs> Greg is back in on Monday. So, go, ladies, you can send in your cards here to the 6 o'clock show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll the roses. Bring <laughs> But guys, that's it. That's the cake. Oh, really it's lovely. Fabulous. Really, really Beautiful. gorgeous. And it's, you know, it's cute. It's homemade. If the yeah. kids want to make one, make it for dessert. Make cupcakes out of it. Really, yeah. really lovely. Nice family that's activity lovely. putting it together. Let's yeah. sit there, Ashley, and you're going to you go. finish the finishing touches there. Gorgeous. That's all that we've got that time for. Amazing. A massive thank you to all our guests for joining us tonight and to Ashleen for this beautiful red velvet recipe. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ashley. I'll be back on Monday where myself and Karen are celebrating Valentine's Day with celeb go dating expert Paul C. Brunson. Bye for now and have a great weekend. And happy Valentine's as well. <laughs> that looks oh, I'm looking forward to trying that.